see will work best. You see, once I saw all this question, I set out to take many pictures of trees. Now, before I never pay attention to trees. Now, whenever I go out, I look at the tree. Is this good for me? Okay, I took a, here, I have three trees. This one, number one, I took at the Welcome Center to Michigan on Route 23. It's a beautiful tree. If you stop by there, you can take a look. This is also was taken there. The third one at uh, the, the Botanical Garden of University of Michigan, because in the, during the pandemic, I often go there. Okay, take a look. So three trees, which one do you think will, will fit the work of Poncari best? I'll, I'll pick a number one. Okay, so as I said, this is at the Welcome Center to Michigan on Route 23. It's a beautiful tree. As you can see, yeah, beautiful. So there are good reasons for other tree too, but I will explain the reason near the end. I'm not gonna give out my answer for doing this. Uh, this is a mathematical, it's not a, a fun question. You can think of why I picked one. So here are some possible answers to the three questions I posed. First, pond color is probably most famous now for the pond color conjecture. Right? Everyone knows about this. And second, he first become very famous for function groups and the function functions. That's made his fame, made him very famous. And I believe his most important contribution is the creation of algebraic topology. Of course, different people have different opinion and may disagree. We can argue for a long time, but this is my choice, okay? Three things. So I'm going to start with some questions on Poincaré conjecture. This is so well known. When did he make this conjecture? How did he come to this conjecture? Here's a related question. Relations between Poincaré conjecture and his creation of algebraic topology. So I think uh, Mike should know the answer to all this. And uh, every mathematician, we have some opinion about this, right? Well-known question. Okay, so, uh, so let's see. So I wanna talk about history of Poincaré conjecture. So what do most mathematicians and historians say about the Poincaré conjecture? So I pick one, Milnon. Well, Milnon wrote quite a few articles about the Poincaré conjecture after this is solved. I choose what he wrote for the clay problem on Poincaré conjecture. That's what he wrote. He said Poincaré first note, some feature of the two-dimensional sphere is simply connected. Then in 1904, he asked a corresponding question in dimension three. Here's the key sentence. From the first, apparently the simple, they, they said four years earlier, Poincaré himself had been the first to make a mistake, stating a false theorem, which can be stated as a, this, as a well known. This is a homology sphere. It's a, hom a homotopic, uh, homeomorphic to n sphere. Okay, this is a well known, right? Mike, probably you agree with this. Most people agree. Now I choose another one, more like a historian, Diodoni. Diodoni, of course, is very famous for many things. He wrote many, many books. Uh, I pick one of his uh, famous book, A History of Algebraic uh, a Differential Topology, on page 34, 35, that's what he wrote. Finally, at the end of the second complement, Poincaré stated the first time, you see, the capitalization, I put them on. He stated for the first time a wrong version of the Poincaré conjecture. So here is, he thought one, all, bet, all betting numbers are one, then it's homeopathic sphere. Same conclusion as Mayano. So here are the two conclusions from them. And in 1900, Poincaré first did a wrong theorem using the homology group instead of fundamental group. And Milner also pointed out, Poincaré conjecture was not a conjecture, but a question. Since the Poincaré conjecture is so famous, you can Google check many sources. Normally, that's what people say. You check many papers, like Morgan's paper and many, many other historian, a mathematical picture, that's what people say, that's what uh, probably you have heard. At least that's what I have heard. That's what I thought. But of course, since, since I give a talk, this must be wrong. Okay. 
Actually, this is not correct. The history is much more interesting and exciting. This is the fifth time, not the second time, Poincaré asked the question, a claim result of this nature. Okay, so how do I prove my assertion? And the related question, why did Poincaré raise this question? Have you thought about this? I mean, why did Poincaré raise this question? Looks obvious, right? But why obvious? So how to, how to answer this question is simple. We just have to read the papers of Poincaré. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I learned a, re, a little bit of French in order to read the Poincaré. So that's one, uh, one outcome of the pandemic. Okay, so here is a list of his major papers in topology. One main paper plus five complement. So the main one is quite long, 123 pages, right? So after that, immediately he wrote five complement. So here are the five of them. I think most people want, when they talk about the work of Poincaré and topology, they mention this. Uh, one main paper, the plus five. And notice the date. First one is 1895, last one 1905. I oh, remember this date. Okay, that's in the main paper. And here, that is 1900. This was mentioned by Milner and Diodoni already. Okay. Now, first surprise. No, his first paper is earlier. His announcement summary is uh, 1892. You see here, the first main paper is 1895. Actually, his first one is 1892, three years earlier. This is a very, very short paper, but with big new ideas. Okay, so I'll give you a summary. What's in this paper? In this paper, he explained the importance of the number of connectivity for surfaces and the Riemann's work on function. This gives some, some very clear motivation as to why he was interested in this, Riemann's work. I'll mention Riemann's work in my colloquium talk. So that's why these two talks are related. Okay. So he was motivated by Riemann's work and the topology. Then he also said he wanted to generalize this to higher dimension. Oh, yeah. Then he mentioned the generalization to higher dimension by Riemann and Betty. Then he raised the question if Betty numbers will determine the manifold up to homeomorphism. One question raised. So it's 1892. Here is this. That's what the Pongolis wrote. So you can read a little bit. Yeah, I'll give you one minute to read. Now, I want to mention when he said the surfaces, he meant n dimensional manifold in uh, n and plus one. So, surfaces is not, not a surface. Because I remember when I check, some historians confuse the uh, surfaces with the real surfaces. Oh, they said, of course, this is true for surfaces. But here, surfaces is a n dimensional manifold. Okay, so here is a question if a betting number will determine a manifold up to homeomorphism, here is this question. Then he said, uh, the answer is no. Then he said, so here, he will question problem how to classify manifold. Then he said, betting number are not enough. So he had to introduce a notion of fundamental group. Then he claimed, very strong claim, the fundamental group will determine the manifold or general dimension up to homeomorphism. So here's a statement. It's clear if two manifold can each be transformed to the other by a continuous transformation, then their fundamental groups are isomorphic. The converse, though much less evidence, is again true for closed manifold. So that what defines a closed manifold from point of view of topology it is a fundamental group. That's his statement assertion. So stronger than Poincaré conjecture. Fundamental group classified early. Yeah, that's the first time he stated. Well, I'm sure Michael will not agree, uh, agree with this. We know this is not true. Okay, so, so this is not true. Three years later, Poincaré also realized this is not true. Okay, so in his, uh, in his big paper, 1895, he raised this as a question. Without mentioning it, he claimed it before, right? He, 
So in 1895, section 14, he raised this question. Are two manifold or same number or dimension and the same fundamental group always homeomorphic? It is a question. So change the result in the question, right? Now here, his statement, you know, Poincaré was not a valley. He never proofread his paper. He also finished writing dense down. Probably I would assume he also include the betting number here. Yes, otherwise you can, take the S2 plus S2, S4. They have the same fundamental group. They have a different batting number. Of course, they are not homeomorphic. So let's give him the credit. He, he, he assumed the batting number. Okay. So it's a reasonable assumption. Of course, it cannot never be too sure. So this is the second time Poincaré raised this question, change the theorem to a question. What's the third time? So at the end of the second complement, so in 1900, Poincaré wrote, so each polyhedral which have all its betting numbers zero and all its tor so this implies all torsions are, are zero, so it's a torsion free, then it's a homeomorphic to a hypersphere sphere. So this is the wrong version, Milner said, it's a homology sphere is homeomorphic to a sphere. Okay. So this is a third third attempt. It's so not the first one. Okay. So what's the fourth statement? Four. So the, at, the, at the beginning of his fifth complement, he wrote. So he asked whether a manifold or the betting numbers torsion coefficient are one. So all the betting number one torsion three. Whether this is, is simply connected in the sense it's homeomorphic to a hypersphere. Here, when he said simply connected means it's homeomorphic to a sphere. And whether on the contrary, it's necessarily, we need a fundamental group to do it. You say, first part is whether all the homology sphere are enough. So change his theorem to a question. Then he said whether we need a fundamental group or not. They said, now we can answer this question. In fact, a construct example or manifold or betting numbers are zero, uh, are zero and a torsion free, but it's not uh, simply connected. It's not a homeomorphic sphere. So this is the fifth time. Yeah, oh, here's one thing that's surprising. You see, he never mentioned whatever he did earlier. You see, he always said, right? You see, he mentioned several times the earlier claim or the the theorem. When I first read this, I was very surprised. I mean, he wrote all these statements before. When he, when he wrote this up, he never mentioned anything. What did he do? Finally, it's the Poincaré con conjecture. So here's this. This is the last line of last of his writing in topology. He did not write more about topology. That's it, last one. One question remains to be dealt with. Is it possible for the fundamental group of a three manifold which is the trivial, but not a homeomorphic to S3, you see? So he become quite suspicious, you see? They're not even sound so confident. He said, uh, whether this is true or not. So it's not a conjecture. It's not, not, not even a question with a strong conviction. Is it possible for a manifold with a trivial fundamental group, but not homeomorphic to S3? That's the point called a conjecture. So that's a history, yeah. Okay, so that was a hi history of Poincaré conjecture. Now I'm, I go to the second question. Poincaré's motivation for algebraic topology. Poincaré conjecture was the last line for Poincaré's writing on topology. So one question, why did they develop a theory of algebraic topology? Mike, maybe I'll ask you. Can you answer? Oh, I cannot hear you. Mike, I guess you have to okay. unmute. What? Somebody else talked. I'm, I'm supposed to say oh, yeah, why yeah. No, I developed the topology. Well, I'm sorry, could you say that again? Uh, 
You mean homology or? or uh... Algebraic topology. The whole thing, homology and the Pongale duality, fundamental groups, all this. Pongale duality, yeah. yeah but what but you, the, okay, the answer is to uh, study the Poincare conjecture. Okay, very good. Okay, okay, your, your, okay, your sentence is recorded. Okay, we'll have proof of what you said. Okay. <laughs> so it's not a surprising, given the importance of Poincare, Poincare conjecture, algebraic topology, many people have written about this motivation for topology in books, papers, biography, by mathematician, historian. So I don't have time to show you the complete list. I'll pick one. Who do I pick? Novikov. Novikov received the Medal of Topology in 1970. He wrote a paper, it's called Henry Pongare and the 20th Century Topology. That's what he, he, he said. So after some introduction, he said, now let's start to discuss the contents of the work. And that is the status of Poincaré. No motivation, but the application was given. Poincaré mentioned only those kinds of ideas already were used by him in order to construct a qualitative theory of dynamic system. He expects these ideas will be enormously useful in future mathematics. Okay, remember this. That's what the Novikov said. Only used in some dynamic system, no specific uh, new applications. Okay, so let's check. Okay, ma many, many other people will write something similar, some with a little bit more detail. So I was very curious, why did Poincaré want to develop algebraic topology, right? It was a very long paper and I felt compliment here. Now, Poincaré was close to Mitch Leffler, as you will see uh, later on, maybe later on uh, or in my colloquium talk. You think Mitch Leffler, I think uh, really asked Poincaré to write many things. In particular, he asked Poincaré to write a summary of his own work. That's over 100 pages long. Poincaré wrote his own summary. That's what he wrote about the topological part. As, as for me, all the various ways in which I had engaged successfully led me to analysis the status. I needed ideas for this time to continue my study on curves defined by differential equation and extend them to differential equation of higher order, in particular to those problems of the three bodies. I needed it for the study of multi-value of the function of two variables. I needed it for the study of periods of multiple integral and for the application of this study to the development of the perturbation function. Finally, I saw in analysis sitters a way to approaching a very important problem in group theory, the search for discrete groups of finite groups contained in a given continuous group or Lie group. For all these reasons, I devoted it to deal with uh, work to this science. Any surprise? It's very dense. You see, the meaning of this passage, is it clear to you? Well, I read it, it's not clear to me, it's too dense. So I was surprised no one has studied this very, very carefully, what exactly Poincaré meant. And of course, Michael said, one of the motivation is to prove the Poincaré conjecture. There's nothing about the classification of manifold of Poincaré conjecture. So this is, I try to understand this. I wrote a paper out there it's about this. Yeah, so this is a, a one, one of my papers that published in a, a serious journal, History of Mathematics. So our paper gave a detailed comment in the summary. We, we tried to explain Elvis sentence in this summary. He wrote also another summary in his big paper in the beginning. So it's a combination of this summary or his summary in his long paper, which I don't wanna quote here because it's too long. All except for the first and the most interesting experience, uh, sentence. This is also the most difficult one. As for me, all the various ways in which I had engaged successfully led me to analysis of the sentence. This is something I want to understand. How to do this? In order to do this, we have to understand all works of Poincaré to see how topology geometry plays an important role. So this will 
this will not be too easy, uh, actually, but it will be quite interesting since the point color was a, is a quite important mathematician. Okay, so let me summarize. Point color to summarize, oh, application and motivations include the following. Number one, about the solution of differential e equation, that generalize the work Riemann from Riemann surfaces to multivariable, so that's transcendental theory of algebraic variety, high dimension. Okay, number two. So this is, uh, yeah, this is also transcendental uh, theory of uh, algebraic variety. Number four, so this is very mysterious. This took me a long, long time to understand what it meant. You see, periods, how are the periods of differential form related to asymptot asymptotic expansion, perturbation function dynamics? First, I thought of there's a small denominator problem in dynamics, a very famous problem. But after many trials, there was no clue. Finally, I figured out what it meant. This is also very mysterious. How do we use topology to search finite sub rules or league groups? This is a more reasonable for infinite discrete subgroups or league groups, probably Heyman analog function Kleinian group or lattices. Right? Here, how to use this to study classification algebraic surfaces and understanding their bi-rational geometry. So this appeared in the summary in the long book not in the summary I call, you see. So if you compare this list with what the Novikovs wrote and all the other people wrote, you will see it's very surprising. Most people just say one or two uh, for Pongali's motivation application. And I also mentioned that is a big surprise. No mention of classification of three manifolds, nothing about Pongali can conjecture. But it's, it's very strange. The classification was in the first paper, 1892, three years before the main paper. What is my the right from the beginning until the last sentence on his writing of topology? So evolution, why? So you see, his work on topology was closely related to the Poincaré conjecture, but why did he not mention? What's your guess? I don't want to guess the loud delay, but I think a punk is just a normal human being. So how would you react? Mike, if it's you, how would you react, right? What am I reacting to? No, what would you do? Like um, you did all this work, the classification is on your mind, but you, well, 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 Mr. Collector offered you to write up your own summary, but he did not mention anything. I see. You, you think he's just talking about the stuff he did instead of the stuff he couldn't do? Uh, no, I think he changed it several times, four times, the back and forth, back and forth. The theorem, question, claim wrong. I don't know. Maybe I just guess wrong on it. I don't think he forget. I mean, he has a very good memory. Oh, okay, that's not important. All right. Back to the tree. So if we if we want to describe Pongali's work by a tree and what kind of tree will work best. So as I said, I pick one. Look at this tree. Yes, I try very hard to find a tree. This tree has two branches. I also need an intersection. You see, two, two branches, it was an intersection. Two branches are right at the root. There's also one branch which close the other. Why do I pick this? Here is my summary of Poincaré's work. Poincaré has two main fields of study, differential equation and a number theory. The close point is the realization of arithmetic function groups coming from indefinite quadratic form in three variable. And the guide or elliptic modular function in creating the theory of function. Fun function. And what's the background? Geometry topology. Well, a tree needs a good soil and a good environment. Well, this is not exaggeration. He said everything he did, he only needed topology. And he also wrote that famous writing, thinking by badly drawn pictures and geometric intuition. All these are very important for Poincaré. 
Okay, it's two branches, one is the differential equation, now there's number three. I'm gonna justify that, this in a minute. Now, Pongali was a good student, but not a prodigy like Gauss, Abel, or Garua. All three people were brilliant right away. Pongali was born in 1854. He wrote his first paper, Surfaces in R3. It's more like an exercise for him, nothing outstanding. Then a more serious paper on differential equation appeared in 1875 uh, at age of 21, where when Gauss was a well-established or already Garua was dead, right? Well, at the university, he followed the works of his two professors at Polytechnic on differential e equations, some, some kind of improvement. Later, he studied the PhD with a hermit. His thesis, even though he still is a, a study with a hermit, his thesis still is differential e equation. But at the same time, he also wrote the papers on quadratic form, the number theory. That's hermit do domain. So Poincaré was good, but not so extraordinary. Then what happened? Then he developed the theory of differential equation by using non collinear geometry to construct a functional function. Then he constructed a function. Then he wanted to construct a functional function, function group without differential equation. Those coming from quadratic forms give rise to arithmetic function groups. And those functions have a very nice property. So it's really the, this combination which made him very famous. So what's the big deal on this work? You see, he gave a generalization of elliptic functions. As you will see, search for good transcendental function was a big deal, given the important elliptic function. One color is a uniformization theorem of surfaces. And the first application of non Euclidean geometry and the theory of automorphic form. So I think my time is over. I'm going to run fast to the end. And? Okay. Yes. So here's a quote. If you have never read this before, you, you can find this one. How he realized non, non Euclidean geometry used in his work and made him made a breakthrough. Second is how the relation between quadratic forms and non-unilinear geometry function group can write. So these are very important. Two branches continue. The differential equation, three-body problem, he, he got the prize for the king, right? Then the whole th theory of dynamic system chaos project here. Ponga is also very famous for number theory. Some people may not be aware. Right? You see, a arithmetic function group with the Shimura comes Shimura varieties. And that Everyone knows about Birch Sweden that conjecture. What? What's the connection with Poincaré? Of course, Poincaré started. You see, here is given elliptical defined with number field. Look at the rational point. That's a finite generated group. Birch Sweden die conjecture is about the rank. And who started this? Poincaré. Poincaré showed that the rational point of elliptical form a group and a claimed. Well, some people say con conjecture is a finite generated. That model proved that it's a conjecture. Okay. Now, so let me jump for it. Okay, where's the topology here? I just skipped this. He said, for him, the study of geometry is a group. And geometry is reasoning well with a badly drawn picture. And the way he said that Pongali's work on elliptical comes from his understanding of the birational invariant property. Uh, algebraic curve. So here, group is bivariate geometry. Now, so I need a better picture for Poincaré tree. Actually, what I tree I like is right at the root, two branches. Then later on, two branches will merge again. I found on on the internet some trees. This is not what I like because it's too messy, not so clean. In Poincaré's work, it, it was very clear. So if you see one. Then, let me send me one. Then, since for the next talk, I, I mentioned Hilbert. I also need a Hilbert tree. So this is a Hilbert tree. And why do I pick this as a Hilbert tree? You can read Herman Wells' summary of mathematical work of, Herman, uh, of Hilbert. Then you will see why I picked this tree. But this is an artificial tree. I cannot find any tree like this in nature. Okay, so I think I'll stop here, yeah.
<laughs> okay. Any quick question for Professor G? Or? Okay, then let's thank Professor G again. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah.